Hello fans and welcome to This Day in Baseball where we're going to bring you a full radio broadcast of today's game and before we do that I just want to thank Classic Baseball Radio and there's a link in the notes where you can uh, check out their full channel. They have many, many great radio broadcasts. And while you're listening to today's game, if you want to check out much more about the game and the players, look on the links below, and you're going to see uh, links to player pages, the date the game happened, the year it happened, and the play-by-play. Enjoy the game, and check out the links while you're watching the game, and please don't forget to hit the subscribe button so that every time new content comes out, you're going to get that uh, firsthand. And thank you again for checking out this day in baseball, and enjoy the game. From Dodger Stadium in Los Angeles, California, it's the New York Mets playing the Los Angeles Dodgers. Rango Beer brings you National League Baseball with the New York Mets. Rango, New York City's largest selling beer. And what a remarkable thing that is. In New York, a city of so many different people with different tastes, one beer has become the favorite. Rango Gold Extra Dry. We don't know why so many people like our beer, but we must be doing something right. Today's game is also brought to you by Cool. Come up to Cool for the most refreshing coolness you can get in any cigarette. For Cool Filter King. And by the Shell Oil Company, makers of Super Shell, the gasoline for good mileage. Stop at the clean white pump for Super Shell. Hi there, everyone. This is Ralph Kiner, along with Lindsey Nelson and Bob Murphy from Los Angeles on a very pleasant evening. The temperature in the high 60s and the final game of this three-game series coming your way. It's going to be Sandy Koufax pitching for the Dodgers and pitching for the New York Mets. It will be Jack Fisher. Each team has won a game of this three-game series. We'll be back with the lineups in just a moment. It is very hard to sell cheap music in Jamaica. You know, they make up songs wherever they need them, like this. Having a party, eating rice and peas, dancing happily as you please. Mmm, darling lady with a very nice smile. Think I'll talk to her for a while. Think I'll talk to her for a while. When Jamaicans get together for a party, the beat is calypso and the songs are made up on the spot. The party was hilarious as it could be, but in the morning there was news for me. The penny was for man's way wedding tune on his pipe. The smiling lady is now my wife. The fighting lady is now the wife. And when the singer finds his throat a little dry, something refreshing will be improvised. Probably Rangold Beer. In New York City, where there are more different kinds of people than in any other city in the world, more people drink Rangold Extra Dry than any other beer. And Rangold is going great in New Jersey, New England, and Pennsylvania, too. Why do Jamaicans like Rangold? We don't know, but we must be doing something right. Left-hander Sandy Koufax warming up for the Dodgers. He has won one and lost none. And warming up for the Mets, Jack Fisher. He has no record, although he was in one ball game for the Mets. Right now at home plate, Casey Stengel going over the grounds rules with Captain Maury Wills. And now, ladies and gentlemen, our national anthem. Starting lineup for the New York Mets. It'll be Billy Cowan as leadoff batter. 
He'll be in center field. Batting second, playing shortstop Roy McMillan. Batting third, playing left field Joe Christopher. In the cleanup position at first base, Jim Hickman. Batting fifth and playing third base, Charlie Smith. Now the Dodgers take the field. Batting sixth in right field, Ron Swoboda. Batting seventh, playing second base, Bobby Cloud. Batting eighth and catching Chris Candacero and the pitcher, Jack Fisher, batting ninth. For the Dodgers, Maury Wills, who was doubtful as a starter, will lead off. He'll be at shortstop. Batting second and playing first base, Wes Parker. Batting third in center field, Willie Davis. Batting fourth in left field, Tommy Davis. Batting fifth and catching, John Roseboro. Batting sixth and playing right field, Ron Fairley. Batting seventh, playing second base, Jim Lefevre. Batting eighth and playing third base, John Kennedy. Batting ninth and pitching, Sandy Koufax. The Dodgers at this moment in first place in the National League. They have a record of four wins and two losses. They have moved in the first place with the result and loss of the Cincinnati Reds to the Chicago Cubs by a score of 3-2. to two. The only game scheduled in the National League. In the American League, Minnesota defeated New York 8-2. to two. At the end of 8, it's Baltimore 18, Washington 4. Baltimore 18, Washington 4. Only two games scheduled in the American League. This broadcast comes to you through the courtesy of Rheingold Breweries Incorporated, Brown and Williamson Tobacco Corporation, and the Shell Oil Company and is authorized under radio rights granted by the New York Mets solely for the entertainment of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, or other use of the descriptions and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the New York Mets is prohibited. The throw down to second base around the Maury Wills and now back to Sandy Koufax, and here to take you along the way in the play-by-play, Lindsey Nelson. Thank you very much, Ralph, and hello, everybody. Billy Cowan stepping in to lead off now for the New York Mets. Casey Stengel has his right-hand batting order on the field against left-hander Sandy Koufax, starting tonight for the Los Angeles Dodgers. Koufax looks into Roseburg, gets the sign. The first pitch of the game is low for a ball as Cowan started to swing and laid off. It's 1-0. Tom Gorman, the umpire behind the plate. Billy Cowan has been up eight times this season and had one hit. It was a double. John Kennedy is even with a bag at third for the Dodgers. Here's the pitch. Swung on and missed. It's one and one. Sandy Koufax in his second start of the season. He beat the Philadelphia Phillies 6-2 to two in a complete game win on April 18th. Here's the 1-1 one, one delivery. Swung on and missed. It's one and two. The win at Philadelphia was the first appearance for Koufax since August 16th of last season. Here is his 1-2 delivery, and it's low for a ball, 2-2. Two and two. The Dodgers, of course, are watching Koufax's performance extremely closely for any indication of what his future may be. Here is the 2-2 two, two pitch, and it's fired low for a ball at 3-2. and two. He came back from the spring training to Los Angeles for treatment for an arm condition, then went back to spring training, came on to New York with the Dodgers for the opener, and pitched in Philadelphia. Here's a 3-2 delivery. Swung on and hit into center field for a base hit. Willie Davis moves over, comes up with it, plays it back in. Cowan has singled the center off Koufax. Now Roy McMillan is coming up. He's been up 29 times and had three hits. He's had one run batted in so far this season. Koufax has a lifetime record of 113 wins and 70 losses. Against the Mets last year, he won two and he lost none. His lifetime record against the Mets, nine wins and no losses. Ball is bunted, fouls, coming back and out of play. Roseberry tries to get to it and sort of hangs on to Roy McMillan. The sacrifice was on to McMillan, so Cowan comes back to first. Wes Parker is the first baseman holding against the runner. Game having just begun here at Dodger Stadium. This is the final game of the three-game set. Mets won the first one. The Dodgers won last night. Colfax looks to Roseberry to get a sign. The left-hander is up and set. And the pitch swung on and hit on the ground. Foul back at third. Mack ripped it, but a foul ball. Two strike count now to McMillan, batting number two in Casey Stengel's batting order. Joe Christopher is on deck now for the New York Mets. Colfax had 19 wins last year before he went out of action with an arm ailment. The year before, he won 25 games and the Cy Young Award. 
Here's the pitch. Swung on, hit on the ground to third. Kennedy up with it, plays over to Lefevre for one. The throw to first, a double play. A 5-4-3 double play from John Kennedy to Jim Lefevre to Wes Parker. Two men out, nobody on base, and Joe Christopher is coming up now for the Mets. Christopher is hitting 241. He's had one home run and three runs batted in. Sandy Koufax has struck out 10 or more batters 61 times in his career, and that is a major league record. He struck out 10 or more on 10 occasions last season. Here's the pitch to Christopher, and a tie for a ball. Jim Hickman is waiting on deck. On deck. Hickman is uh, in the batting order tonight, in the cleanup spot, and playing first base in place of Ed Cranepool. Here's a swing and a foul ball back and out of play. Neither Johnny Lewis nor Cranepool are in the lineup. Both are left-hand batters. Here's a 1-1 delivery, and it's outside, 2-1. and one. Sandy Koufax, 29 years of age. Here's the 2-1 pitch. Swung on and foul back, it's out of play. 2-2. Two and two. It was a little cooler here in Los Angeles today than it has been the last couple of days. The high for the day was 75 degrees. Temperature right now is in the 60s. Two men out and nobody on base. Koufax with a 2-2 pitch. And it's inside low. Runs the count out full at 3-2 and two to Christopher. Koufax briefly to the rosin bag. Here's the payoff pitch. Swung on and fouled off. It's out of play. Count holds at three and two. Again, Koufax looks to Roseboro to get his sign. Here's the three-two delivery. Swung on and fouled back again and out of play. You may recall that Koufax pitched a no-hitter against the New York Mets in the 1962 season here at Dodger Stadium. He's taking a moment to rub up the ball before getting ready to work again to Joe Christopher. Three-two pitch. Swung on and pops up. John Roseboro comes back in foul territory. He's underneath and he makes the catch. So Christopher fouls out to the catcher. And in the top of the first, the Mets got no runs. They had a hit, no errors, and none left. And the score at the end of a half inning is the Mets nothing, and the Dodgers coming to bat. Here's a very sad French-Canadian song about a fellow who lost the key of his clarinet. Listen. J'ai perdu le dos de ma clarinet is a song with the kind of humor French-Canadians love. But one song leads to another, and the first that follows is no laughing matter. Grand anti coup is what they'll sing as they reach for a beer. Probably Rheingold Extra Dry. In fact, in New York City, where there are more different kinds of people than in any other city in the world, more people drink Rheingold than any other beer. And Rheingold is going great in New Jersey, New England, and Pennsylvania, too. Why do French Canadians like Rheingold? We don't know, but we must be doing something right. We're going now to the bottom half of the first inning, and the Dodgers will send up Maury Wills, Wes Parker, and Willie Davis to face Jack Fisher. Fisher, in his second start of the season, he had Houston down 4-2 to two on a five-hitter with two men out in the ninth inning at Shea Stadium, but then he walked Bob Astromani, and Jim Wynn hit a home run that tied it up. Fisher was lifted. The Mets won in the 10th on a home run by Bobby Clark. Maury Wells, a switch hitter. Batting left against right-handed Jack Fisher. 
He's hitting 421 so far for the season. He's had eight hits, 19 times up. He's stolen six bases already. Charlie Smith on the edge of the grass at third for the Mets. And here's the pitch in for a called strike. Smith was not in the starting lineup last night because the night before in tagging Tommy Davis in the rundown play, he had injured his right forearm, but he is in the lineup at third base tonight. Charlie Smith appeared as a pinch hitter in last night's game. Strike one delivery, and it's in there for a call. Strike two to Murray Wells. Jack Fisher is 26 years of age. He's 6'2 and a 210-pounder. Last year for the Mets, he won 10 games and lost 17. Against the Dodgers last year, he won none and lost four. His lifetime record against the Dodgers, no wins, five losses. Here's a pitch just a little high. Kenneth Arrow almost fired that ball down to third and around the horn, but it just missed. It's one and two. The Mets with an infield of Jim Hickman at first base. Bobby Klaus at second. Roy McMillan at short and Charlie Smith at third. Joe Christopher in left. Billy Cowan in center. Ron Swoboda is in right field. Here's a one-two pitch. Swung on, hit on the ground, foul back at third. Between Coach Preston Gomez and the bag. The coach at first base for the Dodgers is Jim Gilliam. Jack Fisher getting a sign from Chris Canizero. And here is the one-two delivery. Hit on the ground on the third base line of foul ball. Gomez comes off the coaching line to field this one. is waiting on deck. Fisher reads the sign. And the one-two pitch. Swung on and hit down the line and left. And this one is a foul ball. Slicing over and going foul. So the count continues at one and two. Mario Wills had rounded first and he cuts across coming back now to the plate. The Mets will be at Candlestick Park in San Francisco against the Giants. Fisher works the one two delivery to Murray Wills. And it's high. Levels the count at two and two. Fisher takes a look around his outfield now. They're shading Wills over toward the left field, playing him as an opposite field hitter. Here's the pitch, and it is hit on the ground to third, taken by Charlie Smith, cuts it loose, and in time, he got him. Wills just flapping that ball to the left side and trying to leg it out, but Charlie Smith fired on in time to get him. There's one away, and that brings up Wes Parker. Switch hitter batting left here against Jack Fisher. Parker has been on base his last seven times at bat. He has a season's average of 381. He's been up 21 times in that eight hits. Two doubles, one triple, and one run batted in. That moves Willie Davis out to the on-deck circle. Here's a pitch that is high for a ball. In the Stanley Cup hockey playoffs, the Chicago Blackhawks three, the Montreal Canadiens one. Montreal leads the best of seven final series, two games to one. 1-0 delivery, and it's inside for ball. 2-0 to Wes Parker. This young fellow moved into the Dodger lineup and took over at first base this season with Ron Farley, who had been the first baseman, moving to the outfield. Here is a 2-0 pitch. Swung on and hit down the line in left, curving over and going out of play. Ryan Farley sort of inherited the first base position with the Dodgers when, in the expansion draft that preceded the 1962 season, the Dodgers gave up two first basemen, Norm Larker and Gil Hodges. 
But then they made a deal and came up with Moose Cowan. However, Moose was traded on and fairly returned to first. Here's a swing and a foul ball back and out of play. Two and two, the count. Here's the final score. The Baltimore Orioles have defeated the Washington Senators 18 to four. Wally Bucker started and got the win, although he was relieved by Palmer in the sixth inning. Bill Ortega started for the Senators and took the loss. He was the first of a half dozen Senator pitchers. Home runs in the ball game by Robinson, Bleffrey, and Aparicio. 2-2 delivery, a breaking ball a little high. Count is out full at 3-2 and two now to Wes Parker with one man out and nobody on base. No score in this game in the bottom half of the first inning. Here's a payoff pitch. Swung on it on the ground to first base. Hickman retreats, takes the big hop, throws to Fisher covering in time, and he's out. Parker grounding out. Hickman to Fisher covering at first, two away, and Willie Davis is coming up. Davis has been up 20 times, had four hits this year, including one double and one home run that he hit in Shea Stadium in New York. He has two runs batted in, and his batting average is 200. The Dodgers like to play the running game, and this is one of the fellows they like to run. Charlie Smith on the grass at third. Here's a swing and a miss. It's a high, hard one. It's strike one to Willie Davis, with Tommy Davis moving out to the on-deck circle now. Here's a pitch swung on and foul back out of play. Two strikes to Willie Davis. Jack Fisher takes a moment now on the back side of the mound, rubbing up the ball. Now he looks in to read Canizero's sign. And Willie Davis steps out of the batter's box. Casey Single in the Met dugout, standing there, looking out onto the field. Casey was chased last night. Here's a two-strike delivery, and it's swung on and foul back out of play. Count holds it two strikes. Casey got to do a little visiting later on last night with Charlie Dressen, the manager of the Detroit Tigers, who is convalescing from a heart attack, lives in the area and was here at the ball game last night. Here is the two-strike pitch. Swung on and hit in the air to right center. Swoboda's up and so is Cowan, and Cowan one-handed and hauls it in for the out. That is retired. No runs, no hits, no errors, none left. And the score at the end of an inning is the Mets nothing and the Dodgers nothing. And here's Ralph Kiner. Well, a little bit of a thrill on that play as Billy Cowan and uh, Ron Svoboda played to Alphonse Gaston at the last minute. Billy, who had called first, made the catch. And you'll be seeing a lot of thrilling baseball coming your way when the Mets come on home on the 3rd of May. They'll be playing the New York Yankees in the annual Mayor's Trophy game. Following that, the Mets open up against some strong contenders, Philadelphia, Milwaukee, St. Louis, and Cincinnati. They'll be playing Philadelphia a night game, the first night game of the season. On the 4th of May, that'll be a Tuesday night. They'll follow with another night game on the 5th. After that, Milwaukee, St. Louis, and Cincinnati. Ticket offices are open at Shea Stadium seven days a week, weekdays from 8 to 6, weekends from 9 to 5. At Pennsylvania Station in the Long Island Railroad waiting room, open weekdays from 8 to 6, Saturdays from 8.30 to 4. In Grand Central Terminal at the foot, of the 42nd Street and Vanderbilt Avenue ramp, open weekdays from 8 to 6, Saturdays from 8.30 to 4. And at Macy's in Huntington, Long Island, tickets are available during the store hours. Also, reservations can be made for box and reserve seats at any Howard Close store in the metropolitan area. Now back to Lindsay. All right, Ralph, and it's Jim Hickman up now for the Mets. Right-hand batter hitting cleanup. Sandy Koufax with the pitch. 
and it's high for a ball. Hickman's been up eight times this year, still looking for his first hit of the season. Steps out of the batter's box and has a word with umpire Tom Gorman. Charlie Smith is waiting on deck. Koufax delivers. Swung on and foul off to the right side and out of play. Uh, Ralph Connick, could you give us the uh, desert weather report for the day? What was the temperature? Well, Lindsay, I'll tell you, my thermometer broke it. I don't know what, what it was today. Just wondered. It was a little cool here in Los Angeles, a little cooler than it's been. Well, you know, any time it gets below 100, the thermometer breaks down there. That's what I figured. It's a 1-1 one, one pitch. Low for a ball. We had reports here, and, of course, they just filter in from the desert by whatever means, and uh, that the temperature had dropped below 100, and people were looking for parkers and all sorts of things to wear. It was 98, and uh, I sort of cool. There's a foul ball back and out of play. Count holds at 2-2. Two, two. There is no score, and we're in the top half of the second inning at Dodger Stadium in Los Angeles. Two-two pitch. Swung on. Hit in the air to center field. Willie Davis coming in, and he makes the catch. So Hickman flies to center, one away, and Charlie Smith coming up. You know, Lindsay, it does seem strange when you go down to an area like that and find that the thermometers are calibrated from 100 degrees up to 150. Yes, it would seem a little strange. How long have you lived in the desert? Well, I've been there for about uh, 13 years. Pretty good run. But I'm never there when it gets up around 125 degrees. That's a lot longer than Lawrence of Arabia stayed. Here's a pitch, and it's in there for a call strike. Now, Lawrence couldn't take it down there. It was a little <laughs> bit too hot for him. I see. One away, nobody on base. Koufax with the pitch lets up, and it's foul on the left field line. Charlie Smith got around in front, pulled it foul. Two strike count. Ron Swoboda is on deck now for the Mets. He's playing right field tonight. Koufax with the pitch, and he checks and takes high. One and two. Koufax with a one-two pitch to Charlie Smith. Swung on and foul back into the seats and out of play. Count continues at one and two. Tomorrow night at Candlestick Park in San Francisco, Gary Crowell will be pitching for the New York Mets. He was the winning pitcher for the Mets over the Giants last Sunday. That 7-1 game, that's what washed away, actually, in the seventh inning. But Crowell was credited with the victory. And Gaylord Perry will be going for the Giants. Here's a 1-2 pitch. Swung on and pops up. Foul back at the plate. Roseboro is there. He has a play, and he's waiting, and he makes the catch. So Charlie Smith fouls out to the catcher. Two men out, and Ron Svoboda is the batter. Svoboda has been up seven times this year, and he's had two hits, and both were home runs. So his average is 286, and he has two homers and two runs batted in. 20-year-old right-hand batter. Mets have one hit off Koufax so far. Billy Cowan had a leadoff single. Here's a swing and a miss. Strike one. Bobby Klaus moves out to the on-deck position. Yogi Berra on the coaching lines at first for the Mets and Don Heffner at third. Breaking ball in there for a call. Strike two. Two-strike delivery. Swung on it on the ground to third, taken by Kennedy on a big hop, and he plays it across to West Parker, and Svoboda has grounded it out. Koufax retires the side in order. No runs, no hits, no errors, none left. Score at the end of an inning and a half is the Mets nothing and the Dodgers nothing. And now a word from Cool Filter King. Today, most menthol cigarettes are pretty much alike. But here's a wonderful exception. Cool Filter Kings. You see, only cools give you rich, mellow tobaccos, Cool's white filter and extra coolness. The most refreshing coolness you can get in any cigarette. So come all the way up to Cool. Discover extra coolness. Your cigarette's not tasting cool enough until you change to Cool. Just not tasting cool enough till you come up to Cool. With rich tobacco, Cool's white filter, extra coolness. 
best brew. Discover extra coolness in your smoke to let cool come through for you. You'll be smoking cool all the time once you come up to cool. Discover extra coolness. Come all the way up to cool. Cool filter king. In the bottom half of the second inning, the Dodgers will send up Tommy Davis, John Roseborough, and Ron Fairley to face right-hander Jack Fisher. The Dodgers coming into tonight's game with a record of four wins and two losses. The Mets have a record of three wins and five losses. Tommy Davis has been up 21 times and had five hits, one double, and two runs batted in. He's hitting 238. Jack Fisher's pitch swung on and fouled back out of play for a strike when Canizero started back, but it's well back into the stand for strike one. Fisher with a strike one delivery. Swung on it on the ground to second base. A big hop up to Bobby Klaus. He plays over to Jim Hickman, and Tommy Davis is out second to first. One away, nobody on base, and catcher John Roseboro is coming up. He's been up 22 times, had four hits, four runs batted in. He is hitting 182. against the left-handed Koufax, leads the National League in batting with a mark of 464. The 1-0 pitch to Roseboro. Strong on and slice foul to the left side and out of play. It's 1-1. One and, one. and it was muffed in the stands. It's the top of the dugout. Rolls back onto the field. It's bobbled all around in the crowd. Now Fisher with a 1-1 pitch. Swung on and missed. It's 1-2. and two. Ron Fairley is on deck for the Dodgers. Here's the 1-2 delivery. A little high. So it's 2-2 two and two now to Roseboro. We'll be on the air tomorrow night from San Francisco at 11.10 p.m. New York time. That's to be there for a four-game set tomorrow night, Saturday afternoon, the doubleheader on Sunday. Here's a 2-2 pitch, and it's high, so the count is full 3-2. We'll be broadcasting and televising on Saturday and Sunday from San Francisco. There is no score here, and we're in the bottom half of the second inning. Here's a payoff pitch. Swung on and foul back and out of play. Count continues at three and two. Charlie Smith is even with the bag at third against Roseboro. Here's a 3-2 delivery. Swung on and foul back out of play. Umpire Tom Gorman gets a fresh fly of baseball. Fisher looks to Canisero. 3-2 pitch. And he checked, took it inside low for a ball. He started to swing and held up. And Fisher is uh, half appealing to the umpire at first uh, for a little help, but it is ball four, and Roseboro becomes the first Dodger base runner of this ball game. 
Fisher issuing his first walk, and Ron Fairley comes up. Fairley's been up 18 times. He's had four hits, including a double and a home run. He's had five runs batted in and leads the Dodgers in that department. Fairley's hitting 222. Here's a pitch low for a ball. Funny thing about Ron Fairley, two years ago, he was just practically written out of the Dodger plan for spring training, and every time a trade was rumored involving the Dodgers, it involved Fairley. Because they figured they'd have Cowan at first, and they'd have Tommy Davis, Willie Davis, and Frank Howard in the outfield. Here's the pitch, swung on and missed. 1-1. But as things turned out, Cowan did not pan out for them, and uh, Ron Fairley became a very important man in the Dodger plan. He was signed initially off the campus of the University of Southern California here in Los Angeles in 1959. Roseboro leads at first base. Here's a pitch from on line to Klaus. He makes a one-hand stab to throw the first a double play. Klaus leaving his feet and stabbing that ball with one hand, and he doubled Roseboro at first base. So the side is retired. And the bottom half of the second. No runs, no hits, no errors, one walk, none left, and the score. At the end of two full innings is the Mets nothing, the Dodgers nothing, and right now we pause the station identification. This is the New York Mets Baseball Network. 810 on your dial, WGY and WGFM Schenectady, the voice of the Mets in the great Northeast. This is Lindsey Nelson with Bob Murphy and Ralph Kanter at Dodger Stadium in Los Angeles. You know, tickets for the third annual Mayor's Trophy game between the Yankees and the Mets are on sale right now at all the Mets ticket outlets. The game is scheduled for Monday night, May 3rd, and this year it'll be played at Yankee Stadium. As you know, the proceeds from the game go toward the purchase of equipment for Sandlot baseball teams throughout the New York area. Both the Yankees and the Mets pay their own expenses in full. The Mets will be back to play that Mayor's Trophy game at Yankee Stadium on the night of May 3rd. Then they open a homestand at Shea Stadium on the night of May 4th, opening up against Gene Mock and the Philadelphia Phillies. Two inning totals for the Mets. No runs, one hit, no errors. For the Dodgers, no runs, no hits, no errors. We're going down to the third inning and coming in here to detail the play-by-play, Bob Murphy. All right, Lindsay, Bobby Klaus gets his just reward as he leads off against Koufax in the third inning. Drawing the applause for the fine fielding play. He took a base hit away from Ron Fairley. Now Sandy looks into Roseboro, the wind up and pitch. A fastball, a swing and a miss, strike one. Billy Cowan has the only hit in the game. Billy let off the ball game with a single to center. Now the pitcher on the way. Breaking ball this time. It's over, strike two. Yogi Berra coaching at first. Don Hefner on the lines at third. Now Colfax in front on the count delivers a fastball under the knees. One ball and two strikes. Mets will fly to San Francisco tomorrow and open their four-game weekend set against Willie and the Giants tomorrow night. Day game Saturday and a Sunday doubleheader. Foul ball hit back toward the crowd. No play. Manager Gene Mock of the Philadelphia Phillies and several of his coaches are here watching the ball game tonight. Today is an off day for the Phils. They wound up their homestand losing to the Astros in Philadelphia last night. So they took advantage of the off day to fly to Los Angeles and catch the ball game. Taken high and the count even two and two. Remember the time that they had a game called in Philadelphia right near the end of the season against the Dodgers? They called it about four o'clock in the afternoon and Sandy Koufax was scheduled to pitch. They're finally getting their chance to see Sandy pitch now. This is the way they want to see him pitch, too. Check swing and a drive toward left center field. Racing in is the left fielder, Tommy Davis, and he makes the catch. Bobby yanked that one right off of his shoulder in the shallow left center, and Davis had to hurry to get in and reach it. That really created quite a furor, especially with the other contending ball clubs in the National League who felt that the Phillies were trying to duck Sandy Koufax. They will not duck him on this series, Ralph, if his arm is all right after this game tonight because it is a spread-out four-day series that winds up with a night game on Monday night. 
A lot will depend on how Sandy feels tomorrow. Outside and high, one ball and no strikes. With the arthritic condition in his elbow after he works the ball game, Sandy goes into the training room. And ice packs are placed on his arm for a while to prevent swelling. Foul ball hit by Chris Canizero back in the press box. One ball, one strike. Last year, the Phillies had trouble against left-hand pitching, and everybody was trying to store up their left-handers for Philadelphia. They have beefed up their right-hand batting attack considerably this year. They were much better against left-handers last year after they made the deal with New York to get Frank Thomas. Too high on a fastball, two balls and a strike. But with Dick Stewart in their lineup, Ralph, the fill should be a lot tougher for the left-handers this year. Yes, I think that uh, Stewart should help quite a bit batting from the right-hand side with his good power. And, of course, as you mentioned, Thomas, too. 2-1 Two delivery. Drive in the air to left field, not too deep. Back goes Tommy Davis. He's under it, and he makes the catch. The ball sounded good going off the bat, but didn't carry it quite as deep as it appeared it might. So two up... Two set aside, and that brings up Jack Fisher. The Dodgers will next be in New York in mid-June for a big weekend series. A Friday night game on June 11th, a Ladies' Day game on Saturday the 12th, and a doubleheader Sunday the 13th of June. Now the pitch is over to Jack Fisher for a strike. Gene Mock can serve double duty here this evening. He gets a look at the Dodgers and also the Mets. They open the next homestand for New York. A swing and a miss in the count strike two. That will be the first night game at Big Shea this season. The Mets and the Phillies on Tuesday night, May 4th, opening the next homestand. Fastball over to strike three. Jack Fisher called out, and the Mets are out one, two, three, and that is Sandy's first strikeout. No runs, no hits, no errors, and none left on. At the end of two and a half innings to score, the Mets nothing and the Dodgers nothing. It's hard to imagine New York City without every kind of jazz from Dixieland to Progressive. Fortunately, you don't have to. Listen. That's Backstreet Rag, a uniquely American sound. It came up the Mississippi out of New Orleans with the Negro jazz men who played it to the world. But they didn't stop with Dixieland and the blues. <laughs> Little David's Fugue by John Lewis is a new sound that's part of a new generation. But whether it's the old jazz or the new, it's thirsty work for the musicians. And when they put down their instruments, they'll pick up a cold beer often Rheingold extra dry. In fact, in New York City, where there are more kinds of jazz than in any other city in the world, more people drink Rheingold than any other beer. Why do so many people like Rheingold? We don't know, but we must be doing something right. Jim Lefebvre, the switch-hitting rookie second baseman, leads off against Jack Fisher. The last half of the third inning. The opening game of this series, the Mets beat the Dodgers with Warren Spahn winning a brilliant pitching duel from Claude Osteen, 3-2. to two. One of the key spots in that dramatic ninth inning centered around Jim Lefebvre. Now Fisher out of his windup. The pitch bounced foul. He barely got a piece of it. In the ninth inning... On Tuesday night in the opening game of the series, Jim Lefebvre was struck out by Warren Spahn, and that was a big one. And as a result of that, manager Walter Alston of the Dodgers got to wondering to himself if perhaps he couldn't help things out if he could have his young players like Wes Parker and Jim Lefebvre in particular sit by him in the dugout instead of coming out and occupying the on-deck circle. He felt he could do a lot toward calming them down as well as to give them instructions. It's a change-up that's over, strength two call. So he asked Tom Gorman last night to petition the National League office for such permission. The permission was denied. Because the idea of having the hitter in the on-deck circle is to speed up the game. Now Fisher with a two-strike count on Lefebvre. The wind-up and the pitch on the way. A foul ball whacked back toward the crowd behind third and out of play.
The only The only other National League game went this afternoon with Chicago on pitching by Cal Kuntz and Ted Abernathy, toppling Cincinnati 3-2. to two. Billy McCool losing in relief of Jim O'Toole. Inside and high, he made him wiggle in the count, one ball and two strikes. The American League at Yankee Stadium this afternoon with Jim Cott pitching a five-hitter. The Twins beat the Yankees 8-2. to two. Tony Oliva had two home runs, each with a man on, and Zorro Versailles connected. Al Downing was the loser. Strike three called. Good off-speed delivery by Jack Fisher. And Jim LaFever is called out. So Jack has his first strikeout. That will bring up John Kennedy, the third baseman. Well, Gil Hodges will find sleep not coming easy tonight in Washington, where the Orioles scored a seven runs in the eighth inning and beat Washington 18-4. to four. Wally Bunker, the winner, with Palmer in the sixth, and Phil Ortega, the loser. Brooks Robinson, Kurt, Kurt Bleffery, and Louis Aparicio all homered. High infield pop fly on the first pitch. McMillan on the skin part of the diamond, under it waiting, makes the catch. John Kennedy hitting the first pitch, and he is out on a high pop. That'll bring up Sandy Koufax. Brooklyn-born Sandy was well-liked in Brooklyn, and he's a great favorite here in Los Angeles. Two outs, nobody on, no score. Last half of the third inning. Jack Fisher delivers. Breaking ball over. Strike one call. Jim Gilliam coaching at first base. Preston Gomez at third. Mari Wills, the leadoff batter, is out on deck. Swing and a miss on a breaking ball. Strike two. Mets have the infield at just about straight away in the outfield straight away against Sandy. Two strike delivery. He started to go, and then he held up, and it broke outside, one and two. Fisher, in his first start against the Astros of New York, had a strong five-hitter. Two outs and nobody on in the ninth, trying too hard to get by. First, pull off the road. Then raise the hood. That's distress signal one. Distress signal two, tie something white like your handkerchief on the door handle nearest the road. Those two signals are understood just about everywhere in America. Use both signals, and you'll probably be rescued in no time. Better yet, avoid the breakdown in the first place. A lot of breakdowns are caused by things like tire trouble and weak ignition systems. Things shell dealers can watch out for. Let your shell dealer check your car regularly. Service is his business. Fourth inning, the New York Mets come up against Sandy Koufax and Billy Cowan bats for the second time. Billy has the game's only hit. He rifled a single to center field, leading off the ball game. Was erased in a double play started by third baseman John Kennedy. Now Sandy over the head. Down comes the arm. Fastball, a strike on the inside corner, and he really had a hummer going then. Sandy was, Sandy was a little wild in beating the Phillies, as you would expect due to the inactivity. Now the pitch on the way. Foul ball back toward the screen, but he appears to be in that real good groove here this evening, and he's throwing a lot of strikes. Sandy had worked only three innings in an exhibition ball game in almost three weeks before he started against the Phillies last Sunday. Two strike pitch. A swing and a miss on a curve. He struck him out. He broke that one right down around the shoe tops. So Sandy has his second strikeout. One away, nobody on. That brings up Roy McMillan. Mack hit into a double play started by Kennedy in the opening frame. Tomorrow night, six foot six and a half, Jerry Kroll strides to the mound against the Giants at Candlestick Park. Foul ball, back toward the third tier and out of play. 
Well, Stan, he may have been unusually wild for him against the Phillies on Sunday, but so far in this game tonight, he has been the Sandy Koufax of old, throwing nothing but strikes with all of his pitches. Pitch thrown to McMillan, a little bit high, one ball, one strike. During his lifetime, Sandy has authored 27 shutouts. He has been in double figures and strikeouts more than any pitcher in the history of the game. The 1-1 delivery, foul ball, back into the crowd and out of play. One ball and two strikes. Sandy deserves an awful lot of credit. For when your livelihood depends on your pitching arm, and you are told that any pitching performance might be your last, it takes a lot of poise and a lot of personal bravery. A swing and a miss on a curve, and McMillan goes down swinging. Koufax now has spanned three in a row, and it brings up Joe Christopher. Joe fouled out to Johnny Roseboro in the opening inning. Outfield, a couple of strides around toward left against Christopher. Koufax winds and pitches. An off-speed delivery hits the dirt out in front of the plate. That's the wildest pitch thrown by Sandy. He tried to start Christopher off with a lot of motion and a real slow pitch. Cleanup batter Jim Hickman waiting on deck. Now the windup, pitch thrown to Christopher, and the breaking ball is over for a strike. One ball and one strike. Warren, Spot, and Casey have the pitching all mapped out for the Giants series this weekend. A 1-1 delivery, a swing and a miss on a change-up breaking pitch, and the count one and two. Gary Kroll tomorrow night, Tom Parsons on Saturday, Warren, Spot, and Al Jackson on Sunday. Again next week, the Mets will have two open dates. Pitching one and two. Foul ball, right straight back over the upright screen and out of play. The early part of the year with the open dates to protect you against the possibility of bad weather in the early part of the year. And the fact that you're carrying 28 men and more pitchers than you have once you cut down to the final 25, it's hard to give all the pitchers the work they need. One, two delivery. High fly ball. Well hit to left center. Way back goes Tommy Davis. He's on the track and he's under it. He makes the catch. That ball well hit by Joe Christopher. Tommy was on the track right in front of the 380 mark when he made the catch. Side retired. No runs, no hits, no errors, and none left on. Koufax is now set down. The last eight men to face him. At the end of three and a half, the score, the Mets nothing and the Dodgers nothing. If you're wondering what kind of a song goes with Sorpresate and Salchichi, listen to this. Come facete mamita is sure to be sung when Italian Americans get together. And spicy pizza rustica will be served. The inevitable result is a fiery thirst. This song brings on the beer, probably Rheingold. In New York City, where there are more Italians than in Naples, more people drink Rheingold Extra Dry than any other beer. And Rheingold is going great in New Jersey, New England, and Pennsylvania, too. Why do Italian-Americans like Rheingold? We don't know, but we must be doing something right. Mario Wills hitting a 400 over the first five ball games, leading off for the Dodgers. Last of the fourth inning. He was thrown out by Charlie Smith his first time up. Fouled down the left field line and out of play. Mets have the only hit in the game. Billy Cowan led off the ball game with a single. 
Billy was erased in a twin killing, and Sandy has retired 11 straight. I think we said eight earlier. It should have been 11. Charlie Smith in real close at third against Maury Wells. McMillan takes up the slack at short. Ground ball hits foul down the third baseline. Fisher now with a two-strike count on Wills. Wes Parker, the on-deck banner, and then Willie Davis. Now Murray wants the pine tar cloth to tighten up the grip on that bat handle. Following the weekend set in San Francisco, Monday will be a travel day for Casey and the Mets. They'll be journeying to Houston. They'll have their first ball game in the new Astrodome against the Astros next Tuesday night. Two-strike delivery. Foul tipped. He just got a piece of it. He actually started his swing quite late, realized he was going to be called out, and got the bat on it just enough to stay alive. Next flurry of action between the Mets and the Dodgers will all come in June. The Dodgers are in New York in mid-June, the 11th, 12th, and 13th for a big weekend series. And the Mets repay the visit starting on the 20th of June in Los Angeles. A smash it hard, a base hit the center field. Maury Wells, a real good two-strike hitter. He was really choking up on the bat and guarding that strike zone. And he hit a shot up the middle for a clean hit, the Dodgers' first base hit. And right now, around Dodger Stadium, the go-go cries start to come up. Murray has stolen six bases in the first five ball games. Wes Parker will be coming on to hit. And Walter Austin called Parker back to the dugout to talk to him before he comes up. This is the thing that Austin had been talking about and the reason he petitioned the National League office. He wanted the on-deck hitter to be able to stay up, seated by him in the dugout. But that permission was denied because the idea is to speed up the ball game. Parker, a switch hitter, and oh, how he can run. Batting left against Jack Fisher, and this is where the pressure is really on a pitcher. Wills on first with the crowd yelling go. Parker, a fast man, is the hitter. Parker hitting 364. Now Fisher off the stretch. Here's the pitch on the way. He's around the bunt, doesn't offer. It's over, strike one. Good pitch by Jack Fisher. He had a lot on it. Now Wes Parker. Reading the information from Preston Gomez. Charlie Dresden was here at the ball game last night while Charlie was with the Dodgers. It was he who was more responsible than anyone else for signing Wes Parker with the Dodgers. Now Fisher steps off to hold Murray Will. Jim Hickman holding against him. Charlie Smith in real close at third. He's almost halfway in. A third of first, not in time. Murray swiped two on opening day in New York, and he got one in the opener of the series, or rather last night. Here's the pitch on the way. But it's foul of the count strike two, and let's see if they had him continue to try and lay it down. Anytime the Dodgers speedsters are on base, it puts tremendous pressure on the pitcher, and he really has to bear down. He has to try and hold the runner as close as possible and still get a lot on the pitch. Willie Davis, the fastest of them all, awaiting on deck. Now Wills dancing off first base. So the first almost had him winning. He had to dive headlong to make it back that time. Good quick move by Jack Fisher. So the first. Jack really mixing him up as he works on Maury Wills, and he's got Maury really scrambling to get back. Maury walking off of that lead so he can just turn and dive and grab. Now the two-strike pitch, a pitch out, no throw by Cantazaro. Crowd got a kick out of the fact that the Mets did pitch out and nothing was on. The Mets had all the room in the world to pitch out there with a two-strike count. Nobody out. Wills on first base. One and two on Wes Parker. Now Fisher comes to the stop. Down comes the pitch. 
Ground ball going foul down the first baseline. Hit very slowly. So Mari Wells returns and the count stays at one and two on West Parker. Just a year ago, West Parker returned to the coast with the Dodgers simply because he was a first-year player. They did not want to risk losing him in the first-year draft, but he improved so much that he wound up playing in well over 100 ball games, and he really helped the Dodgers. Now he has arrived as a Dodger regular. Now Fisher steps off. Jack really mixing it up. Sometimes throwing quickly, sometimes into a slow stretch to stop, then the throw. Trying to make it difficult for Murray to read him. Parker lashed in the batter round. Now Jack is ready once again. Here's the pitch on the way. A line drive foul down the right field line. Hickman made a lunge for it, but it was just beyond his reach. The ball was hit hard, a breaking ball. It was ripped foul down the right field line. Mets nothing and the Dodgers nothing. Each team has one hit. The Dodgers are hitting in the last of the fourth inning. Mets took the opener on Tuesday night behind Spahn, 3-2. to two. The Dodgers won behind Drysdale and Miller last night, 5-1. to one. Now another throw to first base, done in time. Count one and two on Parker. Now Fisher steps off. Jack using every device at his command to try and keep Maury Wills glued to the bag. Maury has told one and all he's going out to steal as many as he can this year. A high fly to deep center. Back goes Cowan. He has the range on it. He's under it. And he makes the catch. Wills is tagged. He's on his way to second. The peg through the second. Close play. Long fly to center. Billy Cowan had to go back almost to the edge of the track to take it. Will tagged at first and moved over after the catch. Cowan really made a great peg. He had a long throw to make. It was right on the dime, but simply he was too deep to throw him out. Willie Davis, the batter. Murray Wills in scoring position, one man out. Willie 0 for 1 was retired on a fly to Billy Cowan his first time up. High fly to center field, not too deep, just drifting back is Billy Cowan. He's under it. Wills tags, the catch is made. Here comes Wills, here comes the peg. Not in time, he's safe at third. Once again, Mari Wills moves up a base on an outfield fly. That ball was hit the straightaway center, which gave Cowan a mighty long throw to make. Now the hitter is Tommy Davis. The Mets will have the infield back with two men down, and the outfield shaded a little toward left against the two-time National League batting champion from Brooklyn. Johnny Roseboro crossed in the on-deck circle. Now Fisher looks Wills back at third. Now Fisher goes over the head. Down comes the pitch. It pops out of Kenneth Earl's glove. No advance. Chris gets to it in a hurry, and that really had the crowd moving to the edge of their seats. No doubt about the amount of excitement that Murray Wills adds to a ball game. Anytime he's on the baselines, the whole Dodger crowd just digs the fingernails right into the seat and advances to the edge. One ball and no strikes on Tommy Davis. Tommy, five for 21 in the young season. Now Fisher is going to work off the stretch. Runner at third, two down. Low and outside, two balls and no strikes. Mari Wells named a team captain by Walter Alston, and Mari has really responded to the added responsibility. He is giving it every ounce of determination. He has announced that he would nothing he would rather do than make a serious run at his 104 stolen bases. 2-0 delivery. Off the stretch, low it outside, ball three. 
But now Jack behind on Tommy 3 0, and now it's Tommy Davis looking for the information from Preston Gomez, the third base coach. When Maury had his fantastic year and stole over 100 bases, he had Jim Gilliam batting behind him. Drive hit hard to right field, a clean base hit. Wilkins hit a score. They let Davis hit 3 0, and he singles on the run. Tommy Davis getting his third RBI. Dodgers lead 1-0. The hitter is Johnny Roseboro. Oh, Walter Alston flashed the green light to Tommy on 3-0, and, and he singles to the opposite field, scoring Maury Wills. Just a strike on the inside corner. Actually, it nicked the bat handle and came into Canizero's miss. So Maury's speed certainly helped to manufacture that run. Without the speed, which enabled him to go to second on a fly to center and third on a fly to center, he could not have scored. Johnny Roseboro drew a walk his first time up. High fly to center field. Coming in on this one is Billy Cowan. Billy's under it waiting, and the side is out. Three putouts in the center for Billy Cowan. One run, two hits. No errors, and one left on. So it was a single by Murray and the speed of Murray Wills with a timely hit of Tommy Davis that provides the Dodgers with the first run of the night. And the score at the end of four, the Dodgers won and the New York Mets nothing. Right here we pause for station identification. This is the New York Mets Baseball Network. 8-10 on your dial, WGY and WGFM Schenectady, the voice of the Mets in the great Northeast. The brand-new 1965 Mets yearbook is fresh off the presses and all ready for you. It has the up-to-date facts and figures on all of our Mets, plus 258 action photographs. The lifetime records of all the Mets, including the first-year men, are there in complete detail. And as a special extra, there's a full squad picture on the back cover suitable for framing. There's a special section on new Mets, Yogi Berra and Warren Spahn, with plenty of pictures. So to get the new 1965 Mets yearbook, Send 50 cents to Mets Yearbook, Shea Stadium, Flushing, New York. Repeating the address, Mets Yearbook, Shea Stadium, Flushing, New York. We're going now to the top half of the fifth inning with the Dodgers leading by a score of one to nothing. And once again, here's Bob Murphy. All right, Lindsay, Jim Hickman comes up against Sandy Koufax in the fifth inning. The Dodgers now have a one nothing lead. Not many base runners in baseball today would have gone from first to second on that fly to center despite the fact that it was hit deep because Billy Cowan made such an outstanding peg. As it was, it was a fairly close play at second. Now the windup, the pitch to Hickman, and the breaking ball is over. Strike one call. Best shot hit by the Mets so far was the long drive. Christopher nailed off Fendi as the last out in the fourth. A swing and a miss to count strike two. Fendi working consistently ahead of the batter. Just missed the outside corner. One ball and two strikes. Koufax working on a string right now. He has retired 11 straight hitters. Now Sandy with a one and two count on Jim Hickman. The pitch to Jim. Hit hard. A liner to short. Caught by Wills. He blistered that one. And the last two men up for New York have hit the ball hard. Christopher deep to left. 380 feet out. And that was a sizzling liner right straight at Maury Wills. One away and nobody on. That brings up Charlie Smith. Charlie missed the game last night. He had jammed his shoulder slightly in making the tag play on Johnny Roseboro the night before. Or on Tommy Davis, beg your pardon. Pitches over for a call strike. Now Sandy over the head. Around comes that valuable left arm. A liner hit hard into center field. A base hit. Charlie Smith takes the turn, and he's on. And that's three in a row who have rocked it hard against Sandy. Now one out and one on. The tying run is on. And coming up is Ron Swoboda. 
Ron hit the ball hard his first time up. He hit a curveball and grounded out third to first, but it was pulled and it was hit well. Each team now has two hits. Dodgers in front, one nothing. We're in the top of the fifth inning. Wes Parker will hold against base runner Charlie Smith. A swing and a miss, strike one. Twenty-year-old Ron Swoboda playing his second year of professional baseball. Ron has wonderful power when he gets a hold of one. Now the pitch on the way. High pop-up outside first down the right field line. Coming over Lefebvre, the second baseman. And he takes it in foul territory just across the line. So Ron Swoboda fouls out to Lefebvre. Two men down on the New York fifth inning, and that brings up Bobby Clouds. Bobby was retired on a soft drive to left center, leading off in the third inning. Johnny Roseboro, the Iron Man in the mask, crossed behind the plate, handling Sandy Koufax. Pitch thrown, a swing and a miss, and a high hard one. He threw that one up in his eyes, and Bobby went right after it. Now Koufax off the stretch. Ground ball, whacked toward the hole, taken to the hole by Wills. Throw to second, a forced play, the side is out. Beauty of a play by Maury Wills. He went deep in the hole, made the stack, and had to whirl and throw off balance, and he threw accurately to Jim Lefebvre to force Charlie Smith. No runs, one hit, no errors, one left on. So we've come in a hurry halfway through. At the end of four and a half, the score, the Dodgers won, and the New York Mets nothing. And now a word from Cool Filter King. <laughs> cigarette is not tasting cool enough. Come all the way up to cool. You'll be glad you did. You'll be smoking cool all the time once you come up to cool. Come up to cool. Cool Filter King. Buy a carton today. Ron Fairley is up against Jack Fisher in the last half of the fifth inning. Breaking ball taken low inside. One ball and no strike. Tom Gorman umpiring the plate. Former left-hand hurler fires the ball out to Jack Fisher. Fairley hit a hard line drive into a double play his first time up. It was a good play by Bobby Klaus. Bobby made a leaping grab and then fired to first to double up Roseboro. Too high. Two balls and no strikes. Gary Kroll tomorrow night against the Giants. Gary beat the Giants in the second game of the Sunday doubleheader at Shea Stadium. Tom Parsons on Saturday, Al Jackson and Warren Spahn Sunday. Good pitch on the outside corner. He shaved it. Two balls and a strike. Ron Fairley batting number six in the Dodger order. Jim Lefebvre on deck and then John Kennedy. Six, seven, and eight in the Dodger batting order. 2-1 delivery. Hit on the air deep down the left field line. It may stay fair and beat trouble. Fair ball. It bounces into the stands. A ground rule double. Ron Fairley with a long line double down the left field line. It's 330 feet to the foul pole. That ball hit about three feet shy of the foul pole and low fence. Low screen that protects the field box customers and bounced into the seats. A ground rule double by Ron Fairley. Johnny Lewis narrowly missed a home run in that spot last night. (laughs) 
Now the Dodgers have their third hit of the game, and coming up is Jim LaFever. Once again, Walter Alston called Jim LaFever back to talk to him before he came up to hit. LaFever, a switch hitter, will be batting left against Fisher. He was out on strikes in the third inning. LaFever has had six hits this year, and they've all been extra base hits. Five doubles and a triple. Now Fisher whirls, driving the runner back. Here's the pitch on the way. Slider missing inside, one ball and no strikes. John Kennedy on deck, then Sandy Koufax. Charlie Smith playing even with the bag, wide of the line at third. Roy McMillan a stride or two over towards second. Lefebvre choking up just a little bit on the handle of the bat. A line drive looped into short center field. It'll be in for a base hit. Cowan grabs it on a hop. They hold the runner fairly up at third on a good strong throw coming in from Billy Cowan. Runners on first and third. Ron Fairley had all he could do to stop. He almost ran through the stoplight of Preston Gomez. When he tried to slam him on, he almost toppled over. That's the first single that Jim LeFevre has collected this year. Prior to that base hit, that single, he had six hits. They'd all been extra base hits. This one is a single into short center. And now Walter Alston is calling John Kennedy back to the dugout. Walter is really supplying the reasons as to why he wanted to get permission to have the on-deck batter sit by him in the dugout. Permission was denied by the National League office. Walter feels he has newcomers and youngsters this year that he can help if he can have them next to him before they come up to hit. He didn't feel it would slow up the ball game any. But uh, three different times now, Ralph, he has called his on-deck hitter back to the dugout. Well, Bob, you can tell him all you want, but when you get up there, you're on your own. It's like Henry Aaron saying, I didn't come up here to read, huh? <laughs> Runners at first and third. The pitch to Kennedy, a swing and a miss, strike one. Ron Fairley is on third. Jim LaFever on first. Like they say, don't uh, let them throw the fastball by you. Make sure that uh, you don't get fooled in the curve. Execution is something else. Ground ball slashed to shortstop. The ball goes to second for one. On to first. Double play, and the runner fairly held at third. Ron fairly held at third. He did not try to go. On the ground ball, hit the shortstop. Ralph, I guess they must have thought that McMillan was going to go to the play to be broke. Well, the one thing there, Bob, and Fairley knows it right now because he's got his head right straight down as though he's been a bad boy at school. you got to go because you have to try and break up the double play. It's automatic, and he didn't go. Well, he sure didn't, and uh, as you say, Ron probably feels worse than anybody in the ballpark right now. Fans come up to cool for the most refreshing coolness you can get in any cigarette. Smoke cool, filter king. Now Sandy pops it up in foul territory. Hickman has a play on it. And he makes the catch, the side is out. So the Dodgers had runners on first and third. Nobody out. They failed to score. The Mets getting their second double play in five innings. No runs, two hits, no errors, and one left on. And now five innings complete. The Dodgers, one run, four hits, no errors. New York, no runs, two hits, and no errors. Now the ground crew is coming out to manicure the diamond for the second half of the ball game. Say, remember the 23-inning game with the Giants last year? Who will ever forget it? A triple play started by Roy McMillan. Great pitching. Then the absolute epitome in pitching, Jim Bunning's perfect ball game on Father's Day in Shea Stadium. Or the Mets near upset of the pennant-bound Cardinals the last weekend of the season. Well, now you can relive these exciting moments of Mets history and many more by getting the brand-new Let's Go Mets record album. You'll hear the play-by-play -play highlights of our most memorable Mets broadcast. The voices of Casey Stingle, Ron Hunt, Al Jackson, and other top Mets performers right in your own home. Home. Oh. Now, all you have to do to get your own copy of the Let's Go Mets record album is to send $3 to Mets album, Shea Stadium, Flushing, New York. 
Make your check payable to the New York Mets. Again, that's Mets album, Shea Stadium, Flushing, New York. The album is enclosed in a handsome full-color jacket and costs $3. Tuesday night in the opener of this series, Tommy Davis was on third when a ground ball was hit back to Spani, and he broke for the plate to break it up, and Spani, not sure he could get to, got Davis, and then went on to win. Right now, we're going to the sixth inning, and a man who knows the game inside and out, Ralph Kiner. Thank you, Bob. The first man up is Chris Canizero, and the first pitch by Koufax, a curveball in for strike one. Rather an unusual game for Sandy Koufax. He has only chalked up three strikeouts so far. Sandy has been one of the top strikeout artists in baseball. Next pitch is a fastball high. It's one ball and one strike. Sandy twice in his career has struck out 18 batters in one game, one time a night against the Giants, one time in the daytime against the Cubs. Next pitch back is swung on at strike two. Against the Cubs, he tied Bob Fellows' record for strikeouts in a day game, which is a major league record. Kopax also holds the National League record for strikeouts in one season. Fastball fouled away. The count will stay at one and two. Sandy and... 1963 struck out 306 batters in one season. That set an all-time National League record. One ball, two strikes. The left-hander back again. And the drive deep to left center field. It's going to go way back there. Tommy Davis is back in the wounding track. He makes the catch. Tommy Davis about 370 feet away. A long run in the left center field. And Chris Canizero's out. Second time that Tommy has taken care of him. One away here in the top of the sixth. Dodgers leading 1-0. That brings up Jack Fisher. Jack, one of the three strikeout victims by Sandy Koufax. He chalked up three in a row, getting Jack Fisher, Billy Cowan, and Roy McMillan. Bottom half of the third and the top of the fourth. And Koufax now into the windup, back to the plate. A bunt attempt is missed at strike one. Fastball missed by Jack Fisher. Jack trying to bunt past the pitcher, and he caught... John Kennedy a little bit deep at third, but he missed the pitch. Strike one pitch is a check swing foul ball out of play. Strike two. Sandy Koufax, who has pitched three no-hit games working against the Mets. 1962, he pitched one against the Mets, 5 nothing. He walked five in that game. Pitched a no-hitter against the Giants in 63. Next pitch is swung on foul tip. And the ball pops out of the glove of John Roseboro, and the count holds that strike two. His third no-hit game was a good one, a 3 nothing win against the Phils, in which he pitched the 27 men. Next pitch is ball one. So the count now at one ball and two strikes. And that one, he walked one, but a double play took the runner off. One-two pitch, a curveball in there, looked at it, strike three. Colfax was strikeout number four now. That's twice that he has picked up Jack Fisher, and he'll now pitch to the leadoff batter, Billy Cowan. Billy has struck out in single. He has one of the two hits that Sandy has given up. The other was by Charlie Smith in the center field. Cowan, a right-hand batter. The first pitcher curves, swung over and missed, sort of weakly at strike one. Colfax signed for $17,000, was signed by the Brooklyn Dodgers. Most valuable player in 1963. Struck out 15 against the Yankees in 63. A fastball missed for strike two. That's an all-time World Series record. Sandy last year led the league in earned runs with a 1.74 ERA. Second time in a row. Next pitch, a curve high. Make it the third time in a row. He won 19 and lost five and was out for over a month. One ball, two strikes. And the next pitch, curveball, bounce to third. Kennedy starts in, holds, takes the second hop, throws across in time to get Billy Cowan on a close play. Five to three to retire the side. One, two, three. For Sandy Koufax and the score at the end of five and a half. The Dodgers won. The Mets nothing. Yet see, boat isn't something you roll or sail. You sing it. <laughs> 
Like this. Yedja Bot is a song that gets sung over and over at Polish parties and picnics until the singers raise a fearful thirst. Then they change their tune. Piwa Piwa is the traditional Polish call for beer. And often it's Rangel Extra Dry they call for. In fact, in New York City, where there are more Poles than in all of Świdnica, more people drink Rheingold than any other beer. And Rheingold is going great in New Jersey, New England, and Pennsylvania, too. Why do Polish Americans like Rheingold? We don't know. But we must be doing something right. Bottom half of the sixth, a one nothing pitching duel between Sandy Koufax and Jack Fisher. And the man coming up for the Dodgers, the man that started off the rally that gave the Dodgers a one nothing lead in the fourth. Maury Will. Maury singled to center field, went to second on the fly ball. The center field went to third in the fly ball to center field and then scored in the single by Tommy Davis. First pitch is taken for ball one. Maury won for two in the ball game, batting 429. Nine hits and 21 times up. Left-hand batter against the right hander, and he bounces one down to Jim Hickman at first base. Jim in front of it, comes up with it, goes to the bag for the out. Well, it's always a good omen as far as the opposition is concerned when they get Maury Wills out when he leads off in the inning. Now the batter will be Wes Parker. Wes is 0 for 2. Start of the ball game. Being on base seven consecutive times before this game. Four hits and three walks. Left-hand batter against the right-hander. He takes inside his ball one. He was out to bunt the ball and took off at the last second. Chris Canizero discussing him whether or not he actually bunted at the ball, but he got the bat out of the way, and it's called ball one. Parker batting at 348. Eight hits and 23 times up. Charlie Smith at third base, shortened up. Now Jack Fisher back again, and he misses high with a slip pitch. It's ball two. Jack has given up one run. He has allowed four hits. And in that time, he has struck out two and walked one. One man down in the bottom half of the sixth. Now the right-hander with the side. Here's his pitch to West Parker. It's in there, a slider breaking across the letters. It's strike one. Jack 0-0 for the year. He lost a win the top of the ninth inning to Houston when he was leading 4-2, gave up a walk and a home run. He left the game. Was not involved in the decision. 2-1 delivery. Bounce slowly fouled on the right side. Jim Gilliam picks it up. First base coach now for the Dodgers. And he tosses it away. Jim with aspirations to be a manager someday in the major league. Fine baseball player for the Dodgers over many years. He started out in Evans Field. Two balls, two strikes. One of the few left on the ball club. And the pitch back is taken just a little bit too high for ball three. A full count now on West Parker. On deck batter, Willie Davis. Dodgers leading 1 0. We're in the bottom half of the sixth. One man away. Fisher taking the signs from Chris Canazero. Now he goes into the windup bend. He comes back and the pitch is bounced to second. Over is Bobby Klaus in front of the ball. He throws the first for the out. So two away in the ground now here in the bottom half of the sixth. It brings up Willie Davis. Willie, in his two times at bat, has run. Billy Cowan back deep in center field. Both times, Billy hauling down the ball. 0 for 2. He is batting 182. Four hits and 22 times up. One of his hits, a home run. The Dodgers have only three home runs so far this year. They all came in the road. Willie Davis, Ron Fairley, and Don Drysdale. Don getting his home run, a deep one to center field against the Mets. 
A swing and a change of pace for strike one. Willie Davis fooled completely. Willie, a man of a thousand chances, although so far in this three-game series, he has used the same one every time. He has given up the Sam Usual stance. He had that for a while, thought that was the answer. One strike delivery. Again, the changeup, and it's outside. So Jack Fisher coming right back, and the count of one ball and one strike. Willie, at one time, a right-hand batter. He's on the right side of the plate with his feet. Here's the 1-1 delivery. It's sliced off the left field. Coming strongly, Joe Christopher. He can't get to it. Ball bounces in on one hop. Joe takes it, throws in the second base, and Willie Davis holds it first. Dodgers now with their fifth base hit. A fast man at first base, and the batter is Tommy Davis. Tommy, one for two. He has driven in the only run of the ball game. Single to right field, scoring Maury Wills from third. Well, right here, you can see some action at first base because the Dodgers undoubtedly will want to see Willie Davis down at second. Two men away, bottom half of the sixth. Maury Wills, the only man on the Dodger club with a stolen base so far. He has six. Well, he does not go. The pitch is taken low. It's ball one, and Tommy Davis holds up his hand. Ball was down low, but Chris Canizero came up with it. Tommy holding up the stop sign. Tommy Davis with tape on his handle of his bat. Now Fisher sets again. Short lead by Willie, and the pitch is check swing foul ball off to the right side. That time, Jack Fisher, pitching quickly, caught Willie Davis close to the bag. He was no more than about two steps away. Counted one ball and one strike. Well, this is a situation where everybody's alert. Chris Canazero, of course, the catcher. He's the man they have to depend upon. Short stop and second baseman shortened up for a throw to second. Now Willie Davis with a lead. He goes. Here's the pitch. It's taken. A throw to second base in time, and he is out. Fine play by Chris Canizero, the tag made on a great throw by Bobby Clown. So, Willie Davis thrown out in his attempted steal. The side retired. No runs, one hit. No errors and no one left on base. And the score at the end of six. The Dodgers won the Mets nothing. Here's a driving tip from the makers of Super Shell, the gasoline for good mileage. Can you read your car's smoke signals? Game continues at the beginning of side three. Oh. Can you read your car's smoke signals? The color of exhaust smoke may be a clue to what's going on in your engine. Listen while local shell dealers explain. If the smoke is black, your engine's getting more fuel than it can handle, and sending some of it out the exhaust only partly burns. That'll cut your mileage. Have your carburetor and automatic choke checked. Blue smoke means your car is burning oil, and that means trouble. See your... White smoke on startup is normal. Just moisture going out the exhaust and condensing a steam. Next time you drive, check your car's smoke signals. Remember, if exhaust smoke is white, there's nothing to worry about. But if it's black or blue, it could mean trouble. See your shell dealer. He's also an expert at stopping trouble before it starts. Your shell dealer is always glad to help you. Service is his business. Moving out of the top of the seventh inning, a pitcher's duel between Sandy Koufax and Jack Fisher. Dodgers in front, one nothing, and now the Mets will come up here in the seventh. The first man up will be Roy McMillan. He'll be followed by Joe Christopher, and the next batter will be Jim Hickman. Roy is 0 for 2. And the first pitch by Koufax. A curveball too low for ball one. Then he has given up two base hits in the ball game. He has struck out four batters and walked none. Now the 1 0 delivery. Curveball back and outside for ball two. And now out in the right field sector, the familiar chant heard so often in Chase Stadium. Let's go, Mets. 
So from coast to coast, it's Let's Go Mets for the New York Ball Club. Here's the 2-0 delivery. Fastball look at it. Strike one. Sandy, prior to this inning, had thrown 76 pitches. He has thrown a lot of baseballs. Pitch back is high, and it is ball three. Three balls and one strike. So now he is up to 79 pitches. But he will normally throw a lot of pitches because he strikes out a lot of men. Here tonight, though, he has not struck out too many men. He has struck out four. Three-one pitch in there at strike two. Full count on Roy McMillan. He was taking all away. But Danny with his control just to shade off here, going down the line on quite a few batters. Right now, down the line on Roy McMillan with the on-deck batter, Joe Christopher. And the pitch is fouled away. So Sandy has thrown six pitches now to Roy McMillan. The count stays at three and two. McMillan, Joe Christopher, and Jim Hickman against the left-hander here in the top of the seventh. The Dodgers leading by a score of 1-0. 3-2 again. It's high ball four, and Koufax walks his first man. Time run going to first base with no one out. Right now, we pause for station identification. This is the New York Mets Baseball Network. 810 on your dial, WGY and WGFM Schenectady, the voice of the Mets in the great Northeast. Ralph Kiner, along with Lindsey Nelson and Bob Murphy from Los Angeles, California. Another fine baseball game coming from the West Coast. Mets won the first one, a real thriller, 3-2. to two. Warren Spahn, the winning pitcher. He is now throwing and loosening up in the bullpen, not for this game, but for his proposed start on Sunday when the Mets face the Giants. First pitch now to Christopher, but it hard to third is foul. Good thing for the Mets, the ball was fouled because Kennedy had had a shot at second base. Ball was bunted a little bit too hard by Joe Christopher. It was fouled by about a foot. Roy McMillan charging down to second, slid in, but no play there on the foul ball. One strike down on Joe Christopher. Mets, when they go to San Francisco tomorrow, we'll see Gary Kroll pitching for them against Gaylord Perry. On Saturday, it'll be Tom Parsons against Jack Sanford. And on the doubleheader Sunday... Al Jackson and Warren Spawn against Juan Marichal and Bob Bolden. These are the proposed pitches. Game time, incidentally, in San Francisco will be at 8.15 Pacific Coast time. Pitch back to Christopher High at ball one. One ball, one strike. That means we'll be on the air tomorrow night at 11.10 New York time. Mets with the time run at first base. No one out top of the seventh. They trail by one. Dodgers scoring the one run in this ball game in the fourth. Sandy Koufax taking the sign. He looks at first base. Comes back. The runner goes. The ball hit down the short. Miami goes on through. Roy McMillan goes to third base. Joe Christopher holds at first base. And the ball going right through. Boy, Wells. It's going in there. But it's doubtful whether or not he would have had a play at second base anyway because on the play, Roy McMillan was near the bag and would probably have made it into second. But they lose the chance of picking up an out at first base, and now the Mets have runners at first and third. Time run at third base. And with no one out, the batter will be Jim Hickman. Coming up in the bullpen just before that air, Ron Baranowski, a left-hander. Saw a conference at the mound. Maury Wells talking with Sandy Kopak. John Roseboro also there. Met with runners at first and third. First time in the game they had, they have had a man all the way to third base. Also the first time that they have had a man that has reached second base. Kopak giving up only two hits. One of them came in the first, erased by a double play. The other came in the fifth. Jim Heckman, the batter. He is 0 for 2. 
Infield looking for the double play. The first pitch is a strike call. Jim moving out as though to bunt toward second base, taking the pitch. It's strike one. Second baseman Jim Lefevre playing back for the double play. Maury Wills also back. Dodgers willing to give up a run here in the top of the seventh. The run, of course, would be the time run. But they're worrying about the go-ahead run at first. Next pitch back is fouled off at strike two. So Colfax out in front, 0-2 on Jim Hickman. Jim still looking for his first hit in this 1965 season. He is 0 for 10. Jim played at third base last night and turned in a fine play at third. Tonight he's playing at first. Casey using his right-hand hitting lineup against the left-hander. Now Colfax at two strikes. He has struck him out. Jim Heckman swinging and missing for strike three. Strikeout number five for Sandy Colfax. It leaves runners at first and third. And with one away, it brings up Charlie Smith. Charlie with one of the two hits. He singled the center field in the fifth. Now again, a conference at the mound. Colfax talking with first baseman Wes Parker, third baseman John Kennedy, and catcher John Roseboro. Right here, they're discussing, obviously, the possibility of a bunt play and or whether or not they will go for two. So the infield sets back. They're going to lay back for the double play. Dodgers one run, five hits. The Mets no runs in two. And Charlie Smith, the batter. Charlie, a right-hand batter, standing fairly deep in the batter's box. And the first pitch by Kovac. Line to left, down the line, no it's foul. Line drive, down the line, foul by about 10 feet. That one would have been good for two, possibly three, if it had been fair. Holding at third base, watching Roy McMillan. He did not leave the bag. Going back to first base after moving on down around second, Joe Christopher. One strike down on Charlie Smith. The on-deck batter, Ron Sloboda. So Sandy Koufax now back on the pitching rubber. He looks at first, goes home again, and the pitch is taken. A fastball at the knees, strike two. So Colfax, as he did on Hickman, gets way out in front, 0-2, this time on Charlie Smith. Sandy sets again, his two-strike delivery, inside, high and tight for ball one. Charlie Smith nodding away, it's one ball, two strikes. Don Hefner facing back and forth in the third base coaching box. Yogi Berra paying close attention to Joe Christopher at first. Now Colfax sets again. His one-two pitch. It is swung on a miss, strike three. So Colfax picking up his second strikeout in the inning. Number six in the ball game, and now he has two men away, and it's up to Ron Sloboda. Ron is 0 for 2. Right hand batter. Hit a curveball hard to third his first time up. Fouled out his second. Dodgers leading 1 0. The Mets with runners at first and third. Two men away. Top of the seven. Now Colfax with his first pitch. It is swung on a miss. A hard fastball. Strike one. Colfax up around the letters with blazing speed. Well, in this spot, Sandy, of course, giving all he has. This is the ball game at this point. Ron Paranofsky warming up in the bullpen for the Dodgers. Here's the one strike delivery. Fastball at tight, though, and it's ball one. One ball, one strike. No doubt about it, Lindsay, from up here, and I'm glad we're up here right now. He appears faster than at any time in the ball game. No question about that. He's bearing down. This is it. He's giving it everything he's got here. One ball, one strike. Colfax 
looking at first base, and it's pitched back. It is too low for ball two. Breaking pitch down below the knees, two balls and one strike. Juan Svoboda, batting for the first time against the left-hander, Sandy Koufax. Ron, a second-year player in professional baseball, batted 276 last year at Williamsport. And he takes on the outside corner, a fastball, strike two. So Koufax now at two balls and two strikes with runners at first and third, two men out. On deck batter is Bobby Cloud. Sandy now in the stretch position. His pitch. It is hit hard to short. High off the glove of Ori Wells. Got a run of score. Throw to second base not in time. And Provota is on at first with a base hit. That was a line smash that Maury Wells, he could do nothing but defend against it. Just protect himself. He got his glove on it. Knocked it down. Hustled to pick it up. He threw to second base to Lefevre, but not in time. And scoring from third with a tying run. Roy McMillan. Boy, that ball was hit harder than it was fit. So Ron Swoboda coming through with a big one for the New York Mets. His third major league hit. His other two were home runs. And the score is now tied with Bobby Klaus coming up. Swoboda, a 20-year-old, hanging in there tightly and coming up with a hit. Runners at first and second. The pitch to Klaus. A slow curveball. Too high for ball one. Run batted in for Ron Svoboda, his third run, of it, run batted in of the season. And the next pitch to Klaus is in for a call strike. Count now at one ball and one strike. That's picking up their third base hit in the ball game. This inning started off with a 3-2 walk to Roy McMillan, the first by Koufax. An error on a hit and run play when Joe Christopher... Got on first base on the air by the shortstop, Will. Two strikeouts and then the base hit by Swoboda. Pitch back is popped up in foul territory. It goes out of play. So once again, Koufax has reached the two strike count. This time, one and two on Bobby Cloud. On deck batter, Chris Canizero. Dodgers one run, five hits. The Mets have one run and three. Now Koufax in position. His next pitch, a curveball. Swung on a miss, strike three. So Sandy Koufax strikes out the side. But in between his first, second, and then third, a base hit by Ron Sloboda. And that base hit, a big one, to tie up the ball game. One run on one hit, one error. Two men left on, a walk involved, and the score at the end of six and a half. The Mets won, the Dodgers won. If someone offers you a sappy girl, don't eat it. Dance it like this. The Hasapiko is spirited and lively. It makes Greek Americans feel like dancing. And dance they do. Until they work up a fearful thirst. Then they call for different music. Nina Nai Nai is music a Greek drinks to. He'll sit down, call for a beer, probably wrangled extra dry. In fact, in New York City, where there are more Greeks than in all of Sparta, more people drink Rheingold than any other beer. And Rheingold is going great in New Jersey, New England, and Pennsylvania, too. Why do Greek Americans like Rheingold? We don't know. But we must be doing something right. Bottom half of the seventh, the score tied at 1-1. Jack Fisher on the mound for the Mets, and he will be pitching against Tommy Davis, who is left at the plate. And Willie Davis was thrown out in the bottom half of the sixth, trying to steal second. It'll be Tommy Davis who has driven in the one Dodger run. John Roseboro and Ron Fairley against the right hand. And the first pitch is side-armed and hit foul, bouncing just over the glove of Charlie Smith and just foul. That pitch just missing. 
going for an extra base hit. Tommy Davis, one for two in the ball game, batting at 261. Well, the excitement of this ball game picking up here in the top of the seventh. Dodgers getting out to a first run lead in the fourth inning. Mets tying up the game in the seventh. Pitch back, a changeup hit deep fouled on the left field line. Pitch was up in the eyes of Tommy Davis, and the count now at 0 and 2. Tommy with one extra base hit so far this year. That was a double against the Mets. Now Fisher back again. A sidearm pitch. It's inside this time, and it's ball one. Frank Larry joining Warren Spahn in the bullpen for the Mets. Frank, of course, the number one relief man at this point for the Mets. Jack Fisher, who has given up five hits now with the sign. And his pitch back. Good pitch, fouled down in the dirt. Tommy Davis again going for a changeup and fouling the ball straight on down. Count holds at one ball and two strikes. Jack with the new ball, rubbing the shine off. Crowd here quieting down now as the game gets into the final stages. A 1-1 ball game. No one away, bottom half of the seventh. Now Fisher into the windup. His pitch to Tommy Davis. Fastball foul to the right side out of play. Jack had the fastball by Davis. He just slices off to the right side. So the count will stay at one and two. Jack throwing a lot of change of pace and setting up his fastball here tonight. One, two delivery. It is punched towards second base. Bobby Klaus in front of it, picks it up, throws the first base for the out. Tommy Davis fooled by a breaking pitch, sort of just punched the ball out towards second base, and the play made by Bobby Klaus. One away in the bottom half of the seventh. The batter will be John Roseboro. John has walked and flied to center field. The only walk that Jack Fisher has given up. He has struck out two. Jack getting his two strikeouts in the third. Picking up Jim Lefebvre and Sandy Koufax. Jack worked through the first nine men without giving up a base hit. Then gave up two hits in the fourth for the one run. Change up, popped up. Second baseman Bobby Klaus on the dirt part of the infield waiting. And he puts it away. So Bobby with an assist and a put out here in the seventh inning. It brings up Ron Fairley. Ron had a ground rule double. The left field is second time up after being retired in a great double play by started by Bobby Klaus. He went to third base in a single to center field by Jim Lefevre and stood at third base while the Mets pulled off a double play. And he was left at third when Sandy Koufax fouled out. Barely a left-hand batter. Batting at 250, and the first pitch to him is a change-up low for ball one. Ron with five hits, one of them a home run, and 20 times up. One old pitch, sinking fastball outside, it's ball two. Two balls, no strikes. On deck batter, Jim Lefevre. Jack Fisher being somewhat careful here with Fairley, who has pretty good power. Two old deliveries. Hit hard by the first baseman Hickman down the right field line. Coming over, right fielder Swoboda. He bobbles it. The throw into second base is offline, and Fairley goes in safely. Ball is hit by Hickman, a bullet. Ron Swoboda came over to get to it. He was in front of it. In his haste, he bobbled the ball. It's being scored a base hit and an error. And the Dodgers now have the tie-breaking run at second base with two men out. And the batter is Jim Lefevre. First error by the Mets. Errors even at one apiece. 
Now Jack Fisher will contend with the left-hand hitting Jim LaFever. Jim one for two in the ball game. And the first pitch by Jack is it hard toward first. Taken and knocked down by Hickman. He goes to the bag by himself and makes the play, and that retires the side. Jim on the ball, bobbling the one hopper. It was sort of a half hop, but he kept the ball in front of him, then went to the bag after picking up the ball for the out. No runs, one hit, one error, and one man left on. And the score at the end of seven, the Mets won, the Dodgers won. In other ball games in the National League, Cincinnati lost their spot on top of the National League when Chicago defeated them 3-2. The winning pitcher was Abernathy in relief of Cal Coons. He came in the ball game in the eighth. The losing pitcher was McCool, who relieved O'Toole in the eighth inning. Edwards had the only home run of the ball game in the eighth. That was the only game scheduled in the National League. In the American League, two games scheduled. Minnesota defeated New York 8-2 behind Jim Cott, who went all the way for a five-hitter. Losing pitcher was Al Downing. Home runs in the ball game. Oliva had two. One in the seventh with a man on. One in the ninth with a man on. Rosales had one in the ninth with no one on. Baltimore smashed Washington 18-4. Winning pitcher was Wally Bunker, who did not go all the way. He had help from Palmer in the sixth inning. Losing pitcher was Phil Ortega, the first of six used by Gil Hodges. Home runs in the game. Robinson in the first with a man on. Lefferi in the first with a man on. And Aparicio in the eighth with no one on. Only game scheduled in the American League. So three games in so far. This one's still in doubt. The Mets playing in the top of the eighth inning with the score tied at one to one. And here to take you the rest of the way, Lindsey Nelson. All right, Ralph, it's Chris Canizaro coming up for the Mets here in the top half of the eighth inning. He's been up twice and both times hits the ball well to deep left field. Sandy Koufax, to this point, has struck out seven and walked one. Score tied one one. Canizaro steps into the batter's box. John Kennedy at third base, guarding the line. Here's the pitch, and it's a breaking ball high for ball one. Seven inning totals for the Mets, one run, three hits, one error. For the Dodgers, one run, six hits, one error. Here's the pitch, swung on and foul back, out of play. One and one is the count. The three Mets hit so far, a leadoff single in the first inning by Billy Cowan. A single by Charlie Smith in the fifth inning. And a single in the seventh by Svoboda off the glove of Maury Wills at shortstop. Here's a one-one pitch, and it's in for a call strike. One and two. Jack Fisher wearing the jacket is kneeling in the on-deck circle. Casey Single in the mid dugout pacing up and down. Koufax with the one-two pitch. Swung on it on the ground to third. Taken by John Kennedy. Crossed the diamond to West Parker and Canizaro is out. One away. Nobody on base and Jack Fisher is coming up. He has been a twice. He's been a strikeout victim on both occasions. He's getting a hand from the Dodger fans here as he comes up. We hope that you enjoy these broadcasts of the Mets games, and we hope you'll enjoy a Rango beer along with the game. Fisher is a right-hand batter facing left-hander Sandy Koufax. Fisher swung on and missed fastball for strike one. Ron Peronowski still is throwing in the Dodger bullpen. And Fisher tries to bunt and misses for strike two, trying to bunt his way on, trying to dump it down the third baseline. But now with two strikes on Fisher, Kennedy retreats to a deep third base. Here's a two-strike delivery. Swung on and fouled off right off the end of the bat. And on deck, Cowan has to play a little hopscotch to get out of the way. Count holds a two-strike to Jack Fisher. The Dodgers won and the Mets won. Two-strike delivery. Swung on and missed. And Sandy Koufax has struck Fisher out three times. He has a total of eight strikeouts in the game. Two men out, nobody on base. And Billy Cowan's coming up. Cowan is one for three. Thank you. 
Here's a pitch swung on and missed for strike one. 20,888 paid here tonight. Tomorrow night, the Mets are at Candlestick Park in San Francisco against the Giants. There again on Saturday and a doubleheader on Sunday. And on Monday, the Mets are off, but it'll be a travel day for them as they travel down to Houston, Texas. The strike one pitch. High for a ball. It's one and one. Mets will be in Houston on Tuesday night and Wednesday night, playing in the Astrodome for the first time. The one-one delivery. Swung on and hit on the line to left. It's in there for a base hit. One hop by Tommy Davis. Played back. And Cowan takes his turn at first. And holds with his second hit of the night. It's the fourth hit for the Mets off Koufax. It comes here on the top of the eighth with two men out. And Roy McMillan's coming up. Roy hit into a double play in the first inning. Struck out swinging in the fourth and walked and later scored the Met run in the top of the seventh. Koufax bends from the waist this time to get the sign. Wes Parker holds against Cowan at first base. Here's the pitch, and it's in there for a called strike. Joe Christopher moves out to the on-deck circle for the Mets. Now Sandy checks and throws over to first. Cowan's back easily at first base. The pitch to McMillan is in there for a call. Strike two. Got an outside corner. Sandy was using a head fake to hold Cowan close at first. Again, Sandy looks for his sign. And throws over to first. Ball is dropped there by Parker, although Cowan was back safely anyway. McMillan stepped out of the batter's box. Now he's back in. Two men out and a runner at first with a score tied. 1-1. One, one. Here's a throw over, not in time. Runner goes, and the pitch gets away from Roseboro. It was low, and Roseboro back in McMillan slides in, although there was no play on him at second. And it scored as a wild pitch. A wild pitch charged against Sandy Kopak, so that ball was down low. Well, you had kind of doubt whether they can score that as a wild pitch. It has to be a stolen base. I think they might correct that thing. He was running, and no play was made on him, as it was down low, and Roseboro chased it on back. So the count, it is now changed. You're absolutely right, Ralph. It is now changed to stolen base. So McMillan is at, uh, rather, Cowan is at second, and the count to McMillan is one and two. Here is a swing, and a miss. Tipped it back into the glove of Roseboro. Slight tip, and he held on. And strikeout number nine is chalked up for Sandy Koufax as the Mets in the top of the eighth. Got no runs. They had one hit. No errors, a stolen base and one left, and the score at the end of seven and a half innings is the Mets one and the Dodgers one. And now a word from Cool Filter King. Your cigarette's not tasting cool enough until you change to cool. Just not tasting cool enough till you come up to cool. And right now is a good time to come up, all the way up to Cool Filter King. Cool is the only cigarette that gives you rich, mellow tobaccos, Cool's white filter, and extra coolness. Discover extra coolness in your smoke. Let Cool's come through for you with the most refreshing coolness you can get in any cigarette. With rich tobacco, Cool's white filter, extra coolness too. Discover extra coolness in your smoke. Let cool come through for you. up to cool. Discover extra coolness. Smoke cool. Filter Kings.
We're going to the bottom half of the eighth inning, and John Kennedy is up to lead off for the Dodgers. He's number eight in the batting order. Pitcher Sandy Colfax is scheduled up second in the inning. The score is tied 1-1. The Dodgers have Joe Moeller and Bob Miller working in the bullpen. The Mets have Frank Larry and Galen Sisko throwing in the bullpen. Jack Fisher is still in the ballgame. Delivers the first pitch to Kennedy, and it's a breaking ball in there for a call strike. Colfax comes out to the on-deck circle wearing the jacket. Again, Jack with the pitch. Swung on and hit in the air to left field. Going back is McMillan and coming over is Christopher. He's near the line in fair territory, and Christopher makes the catch. So there's one away, and right now we're just about for station identification. This is the New York Mets Baseball Network. 810 on your dial, WGY and WGFM Schenectady, the voice of the Mets in the great Northeast. This is Lindsey Nelson with Ralph Kiner and Bob Murphy at Dodger Stadium in Los Angeles, California, and Sandy Koufax is up there now. He's a right-hand batter. Struck out and fouled out to first base in his two previous appearances at the plate. Here's a pitch swung on and missed. He took a hefty cut all the way around. Strike one. Jack Fisher has struck out two and walked one in the game tonight. Here's a pitch and it misses outside low. It's one and one. One delivery. Swung on and missed. It's one and two. Colfax has struck Fisher out three times tonight, and Jack is trying to partially return the compliment. He has one strikeout in facing Colfax. The other time, Sandy fouled out first. The count now is one and two as Fisher takes a look around. Set to work. The one-two pitch. He struck him out. Strikeout number three for Fisher in this game. Two away, nobody on base, and Maury Wills is coming up now for the Dodgers. Wills has grounded out third to first, had a ground single up the middle, and later scored the Dodger run, and he grounded out to first base. Charlie Smith at third for the Mets, moves in on the edge of the grass against the speed of Maury Wills. Fisher with the pitch, swung on and hit on the ground to first base. And Jim Hickman takes it. That's the bag, tags the bag, and the side is out in order. Fisher sets them down. One, two, three. No runs, no hits, no errors, none left. Score at the end of eight full innings is the Mets one and the Dodgers one. And now here's Ralph Kiner. Okay, Lindsay, this one right down the line going to the ninth inning, and the Mets won and the Dodgers won. This has been quite a thrilling experience. This first road trip with the New York Mets as they have battled the Dodgers, one of the leading contenders in the National League, right all the way. Warren Spahn winning the first one 3-2, to two, and then Drysdale coming back, winning the second. And this one's still up for grabs. Mets will be playing back in Shea Stadium starting on May the 3rd when they play the Yankees for the Mayor's Trophy game. Then they'll open up against Philadelphia the first night game of May the 4th, following with a night game in the 5th. So the Mets are back in town in Shea Stadium on the 3rd and the 4th, the 4th to start of the National League. Tickets are available at Shea Stadium seven days a week, weekdays from 8 to 6, weekends from 9 to 5. At Pennsylvania Station, tickets available from 8 to 6, Saturdays from 8.30 to 4, in the Long Island Railroad Wedding Room and at Grand Central Terminal at the foot of the 42nd Street Avenue and Vanderbilt Ramp, open from 8 to 6 on weekdays, Saturdays from 8.30 to 4. Macy's and Huntington open during the store hours and reservations can be made for box and reserve seats at all Howard Crow stores in the metropolitan area. Now the top of the ninth and Lindsay Nelson. And it's Joe Christopher up to lead off for the Mets. A moment ago, perhaps you heard in the background the chant of a small but vociferous delegation saying, let's go Mets. Well, during the half inning here, the intermission between innings, they had a Mets banner strung out upstairs. Here's Koufax with the pitch, and it breaks in there for a call strike to Joe Christopher. Joe has fouled out to the catcher, flied to left, and was on on an error by Murray Wills at shortstop. He backs out of the batter's box at this moment, gets a handful of dirt, and comes back in. Christopher leading off for the Mets. In the top half of the ninth inning. Colfax has been in all the way. Here's a pitch and a tie for a ball. One and one. 
Jim Hickman on deck. Again, Christopher backs out of the batter's box, taps the spike, gets a handful of dirt, and comes back in. Koufax with a 1-1 delivery. Swung on and missed, and it pops out of the glove of Roseboro. He chases it over a few feet. One and two now to Joe Christopher. Koufax has struck out nine and walked one. And giving up one run on four hits. The one-two pitch. And it's low for a ball. Two-two. Koufax has reached double figures in strikeouts more times than any other pitcher in the history of the game. Here's the 2-2 pitch. Swung on and foul back. So any time that Koufax strikes out as many as 10 men in the game, it's a new record. He's done it 61 times. He did it 10 times last season. Here's a 2-2 pitch. Swung on and hit back to Koufax, the comebacker, and he tosses easily over to West Parker. And Christopher is grounded out, pitcher to first. One away for the Mets, batting in the top of the ninth, and Jim Hickman is coming up. Slide to center, hit a shot to Murray Wills at short, a line drive in the fifth, and struck out swinging in the seventh inning. Kovac starts to work, and the pitch is high to Hickman for ball one. Charlie Smith now is on deck. One zero delivery, and it's in there for a call strike. One and one. Dodgers got there, run in the bottom of the fourth. The Mets got theirs in the top of the seventh. One one delivery, misses outside for a ball. It's two and one. delivery. It's low, so now Koufax goes behind the Hickman. Three balls and one strike, and Sandy walks down off the mound a few steps to take the return throw from Roseboro. He walks around now to the backside of the mound. Just his cap reaches for the rod and bag. Koufax with a 3-1 pitch. Swung on and land. On a short hop to third base, second by Kennedy, throws on for the out in time. Hickman got around and hit that one. He shot, but it was short hopped by Kennedy at third, and he straightened up and fired on to Parker in time. Two away. That'll bring up Charlie Smith. The fans here, of course, in Dodger Stadium are buzzing about the glove work of John Kennedy at third. Charlie Smith has fouled out to the catcher, single to center, and struck out swinging so far. Breaking balls in there for a called strike. Score tied, 1-1. One, one. The pitch swung on, hit on the ground to short. Maury Wills over, scoops it up, plays the first hand in time. He got it. Koufax gets the side out in order in the top half of the ninth. No runs, no hits, no errors, none left. Score at the end of eight and one half innings is the Mets one and the Dodgers one. If you've been wondering what Swedish Americans sing after the smorgasbord, listen to this. song that Swedish Americans sing over and over at their parties and picnics until they raise a fearful thirst. Then they change their tune. Halon Gore is a traditional Swedish drinking song, and often the beer they drink is Rheingold Extra Dry. In fact, in New York City, where there are more Swedes than in all of Huskvorna, more people drink Rheingold than any other beer. And Rheingold is going great in New Jersey, New England, and Pennsylvania, too. Why do Swedish Americans like Rheingold? We don't know. 
But we must be doing something right. In the bottom half of the ninth inning, the Dodgers are scheduled to send up Wes Parker, Willie Davis, and Tommy Davis. Jack Fisher, who started, has been in all the way for the Mets. Park is a switch hitter batting left. He has grounded out, slide out, and grounded out so far in this game. And against his fine speed, Charlie Smith at third for the Mets comes in on the edge of the grass. Fisher with his no wind-up delivery. And the pitch is inside low as Parker is skipping rope to get out of the way of it. Ball one. At first base, Jim Hickman is guarding the line. Pitch is low for a ball. 2-0 and oh now as Jack Fisher goes behind to West Parker. The 2-0 delivery. In there for a call strike. It's 2-1. Excellent speed coming up this inning for the Dodgers in Parker, Davis, and Davis. All three. Extremely fast. The Dodger faithful here now are starting rhythmic applause. Here's a 2-1 pitch. And it misses outside high. So Fisher goes behind 3-1 and one to West Parker and this the bottom half of the ninth inning. This is the 3 1 pitch. It fired right in there for a call, strike two, and Parker was taking all the way. They want to get him on there if they possibly can. It's a full count of three and two. Jack Fisher with the payoff pitch. Swung on and hit in the air to right field. Going back is Klaus. Provotas coming in. Klaus has called and gets out of the way, and it's all safe. Safe and it's a double for West Parker as Swoboda and Klaus got mixed up and the ball fell between them. Klaus went back. It was a high pop. He spread his arms to either side as though he were calling and then got out of the way. And the ball fell between him and Swoboda for a double for West Parker. It appeared to be an easy chance when it left the bat in short right and Klaus backpedaled out there, spread his arms to either side. And then at the last moment, ducked out of the way, and the ball fell in front of Swoboda, who was making no effort. Willie Davis is up now, and here's the pitch. He squares to run and does, but it's a Fisher. The play's at third, and he is out at third. The play going from Jack Fisher over to Charlie Smith, and on at first is Willie Davis. He was trying to sacrifice Wes Parker over. Instead, they got the lead runner. Now, there's a man at first and one man out. Tommy Davis coming up. Play goes 1-5 on West Parker if you're scoring. Tommy Davis has grounded out. Single to right to drive in the run that the Dodgers got in the bottom of the fourth. And grounded out second to first in the seventh inning. Willie Davis on at first with the excellent speed. But Chris Canizera threw him out ceiling in the bottom half of the sixth inning. The score is tied 1-1. Willie Davis leads it first as Jack Fisher checks him. Pitch to Tommy Davis, and it's in there for a call strike one. Jim Hickman at first, holding against the runner, Willie Davis. John Roseburg is in the on-deck circle for the Dodgers. Now Fisher, off the stretch with the pitch to Tommy Davis. It's hit on the ground. The game continues at the beginning of side four after a short delay. It's coming up. Play goes 1-5 on West Parker if you're scoring. Tommy Davis has grounded out. 
single to right to drive in the run that the Dodgers got in the bottom of the fourth and grounded out second to first in the seventh inning. Willie Davis on at first with the excellent speed. But Chris Canizera threw him out ceiling in the bottom half of the sixth inning. The score is tied 1-1. Willie Davis leaves it first as Jack Fisher checks him. It's to Tommy Davis and it's in there for a call strike one. Jim Hickman at first, holding against the runner, Willie Davis. John Roseburg is in the on-deck circle for the Dodgers. Now Fisher, off the stretch with the pitch to Tommy Davis. It's hit on the ground, and it's taken by Jim Hickman. He goes to the bag for the out. Willie Davis goes on to second. That was a shot on the ground down toward first, backhanded by Hickman. He scrambled up and got over to the bag in time for the out on Tommy Davis. He made no play on Willie Davis, moving on to second. Two men out, and a runner in second, and John Roseboro is coming up. Play went to Hickman unassisted. Roseboro has walked, slide to center, and popped out to second base. He's a left-hand batter. We're in the bottom half of the ninth inning at Dodger Stadium in Los Angeles, California. Fisher off the stretch as Willie Davis takes his lead at second base. The pitch to Roseboro, and it's in there for a call strike. Fisher looks to Canizero. Has his sign up and set. Pitch to the left-hand batter. And it's inside low for a ball. One and one. Canizero moving inside to take that one. Hickman moves over. Yells something to Jack Fisher. Now Fisher sets again. The 1-1 delivery. Breaking ball. It's lined into right field for a base hit. Willie Davis round third. He's coming home. So motor throw not in time. Davis scores and the ball game's over. As the Dodgers have won it here in the bottom half of the ninth inning, Roseboro hit that one solidly to right field. A line drive to right. No chance to get Willie Davis, one of the fastest men in baseball, as he rounded third and came out home. So motor picked the ball up fired in, but there was no play at the plate as Willie Davis already had streaked across, and the Dodgers have won it by a score of 2-1. Two, two men out when the winning run is scored here in the bottom half of the ninth inning. The Dodgers taking the series two games to one. So the Dodgers pull it out by a score of 2-1 to one in the bottom of the ninth, and to tell you something of how they did it, here's Ralph Shiner. Well, it was a great pitching duel between Sandy Koufax and Jack Fisher, and Jack deserved a better fate as a messed-up fly ball to right field that could have been caught but was not caught because of some misdirection between Bobby Klaus and Ron Svoboda. The uh, Dodgers got off to a, a one-run lead in the fourth inning after Fisher had retired the side in order in the first three innings. Leading off in the inning, Moore will single to center field. He went to second base in a fly ball by West Parker to deep center field, went to third base when Willie Davis fly to deep center field, and then scored when Tommy Davis singled to right. That gave the Dodgers the early lead at 1-0. The Mets came back in the seventh to score off Sandy Koufax. Roy McMillan led off with a walk. He went to third base at an error with Joe Christopher batting by Maury Wills. With runners at first and third, Sandy Koufax bore down, struck out Jim Hickman, got Johnny Smith to strike out. But then Ron Swoboda came through with a base hit off the glove of Maury Wills to tie up the ball game. For Ron, it was his third base hit and his third run batted in. That's the way the game stood, one to one, going to the bottom half of the ninth inning. In the ninth inning, West Parker led off with a ball that was misplaced between second and right field. He got the second base on it, and then Willie Davis tried to bunt him to third. And a great play by Jack Fisher and Charlie Smith got West Parker at third base. With a man at first base, Willie Davis there on the fielder's choice. Tommy Davis flashed a vicious drive down towards first base. Jim Hickman made a great backhand stop. Had a chance to throw to second, but decided not to go there. Went to the bag instead for the out. That left Willie Davis at second base and John Roseboro then singled to right field to win the ball game for Sandy Koufax, his second win of the year. Losing pitcher was Jack Fisher. He now is 0 for 1. So Sandy Koufax, he struck out 9, picked up his second win. He now has a lifetime record against the Mets of 10 wins and no losses. 20,888 people in the ballpark. 
Mets getting their sixth loss. They have won three. The Dodgers in first place. They have won five and lost two. Fine score. The Dodgers two runs, eight hits, one error. They left four on. The Mets one run, four hits, one error. They left four men on. This game was brought to you by Rheingold, New York City's largest selling beer. And what a remarkable thing that is. In New York, a city of so many different people with different tastes, one beer has become the favorite. Rheingold Extra Dry. We don't know why so many people like our beer, but we must be doing something right. And we'll keep right on doing it. Tonight's game was also brought to you by Cool. Come up to Cool for the most refreshing coolness you can get in any cigarette. Go Cool Filter King. And by the Shell Oil Company, makers of Super Shell, the gasoline for good mileage. Stop at the clean white pump for Super Shell. In old baseball land, there are no fans so grand as our men. When we play other teams, no oh, one blood certainly screams at our men. When men men shout, go, what they mean we all know, we've got no place to go, but up. Be with us tomorrow night at 11.10 p.m. as the Mets meet the San Francisco Giants. It'll be Gary Kroll against Gaylord Perry. Tonight, our engineer was Sandy Alper, our statistician Matt Winnick. Our producer, Joe Gallagher. Our executive producer, Joel Nixon. The final score again, the Dodgers 2, the Mets 1. Now this is Ralph Geiner saying so long for Bob Murphy and Lindsey Nelson. This is the New York Mets Baseball Network.